Welcome back to part two, my friends. Part one, we had a little bit of an overheating issue. It's absolutely roasting here in the Netherlands. But uh, you're joining me on uh, part two of the uh, adventure from Sprankapella. Do not fear, we are cooled down. We had a little overheating on the uh, equipment and we're back again here in Sprankapella. So if you're here with me, uh, then please say hi. I don't know if we're going to have a lot of people from part one because this is actually part two of the... Uh, of the tour from Sprankapella. But if you were on part one, please say hi. We're back again. Hi, Roxana. Hi, Shane. Hello, Eli, all the way from Israel. We are checking out Sprankapella. It's part two. If you haven't seen part one, that is available on Facebook. You can go and watch that. We walked through the village from the beginning of the village, from the entrance to the village, up here into the harbour. And now we're going to walk from the harbour back uh, into the village and take a little look. So, um, if you were with us on part one, leave a comment and uh, tell us where you're tuning in from, whether it's Canada, UK, uh, USA, uh, Sprankapella, lovely little village. This is part two of the show. It is getting hotter, I tell you now. It must be 28 degrees, and I know for a lot of people they say, oh, that's not hot. But for me, that's hot. And for my equipment, that's really hot as well. So Diane's joined us again from South Africa, and Caroline's also joined us again too, which is great. I'm, uh, I'm really sorry about... Uh, about part one cutting out. My equipment overheated and I'm hoping that it should be okay now. Very, very warm for Dutch, uh, Dutch relations anyway. Hello, Alan. Jenny and Alan Bowes are with us. Diamond's with us. Great to see you, Diamond. Ina's back with us as well, all the way from Toronto. Oh man, so part two, Spran Capello. Like I said, the original idea uh, to come here was uh, because I was exploring this part of North Brabant, Katzhovel area, which is where the Efteling is, the famous theme park. And I chanced upon this little spot with a very interesting, uh, with a very interesting history from World War II. It's the site of the Battle of the Capel Sophia. So we came out here and I told you the story in part one. And this is part two. Hello, Lone. Hello, Diamond. She says, hope to see you. Sorry, hope everyone is having a great day. Thank you, Diamond, I appreciate it. Hello, Suzanne, nice to see you. Lone says, I wish we could visit Holland. And Alan is tuning in all the way from Australia. Yep, we're back again for part two. It's absolutely gorgeous, especially this building here. I, I showed you guys that earlier on. Look at that. I absolutely love the sun shutters. Beautiful. Shane's with us. He says, you need a Dell wafting her skirt to cool the equipment down. I do. I need a Dell wafting. Do say hi to Adele, by the way. She's at home busy working on some, uh, some bits and pieces for you guys. So give her a little wave. It's a lovely little flower basket. Check that out. I mean, the whole place is blooming right now here in the country and uh, blue skies today, very warm, and it's football, so the excitement is mounting. So the thing is, they're doing some building here. But if we go, if we go around this way, I wanted to be able to go down this street, but it doesn't look like we can. We've already had a look down here, haven't we? But let's take another look. Oh no, we can. We can go down this street. Excellent. Super, super. So we're in Spran Capella in North Brabant today. I uh, highly advise you, if you're interested in history, to check out the Battle of the Capel Ferry. The, uh, the uh, sad story of uh, the battle at the end of the war. It's very fascinating with the Canadians. Hello, Tina. Hello, Daniela. Glad you're all back with me. We've got one house there dressed up with a little bit of orange. I'm on a, little bit, I'm on a bit of a mission to be able to find you some orange. We are going to be going live later on, before the game, at, uh, at 9 o'clock, so never fear. This is only the first show of the day. We're going to be out and about later on and hopefully catching some of the, uh, the football vibes. Obviously, it's the first game uh, for the Netherlands in the European Football Championships today at 9pm, so 
things will be hotting up today and apparently there's a street in The Hague. I found that there's 14 kilometres of, uh, of orange decorations. Can you believe that? 14 kilometres. So I'd like to go and check that out, but if you are from the Netherlands and you know of any streets that you think, oh, you know what, I'd love those guys to go see that street, then leave it in the comments now. We're in Sprankapelle, and this is really nice. It's one of those places that you probably wouldn't visit on your own accord. Hello, Robert. Good to see you. My friend Robert Hunt's just joined us all the way from Pugwash in Nova Scotia. And Lauren is here too. Lauren Hill. Patricia van der Valt's just joined us. And Jordan Bell is also here on the, on the little adventure. This is part two of, the, uh, of this little hidden Holland road trip tour through Sprang Capella. We're out on the... Uh, it looks like a fleet rather than a canal, a fleet being a stretch of water that flows into a harbour because, of course, we were just at the harbour earlier on in Sprankapella, so this, this little piece of water floats up and meets the harbour. Hello, John. Great to see you. Hello, Zandra van der Geek, Geert Stuck, all the way from Canada. Sandra, if you're interested in Canadian war history, then you want to definitely check out the... Uh, the, the battle that happened in this village at the end of the war with the Canadians. Very, very uh, moving story, actually. And there's a, there's a blog online from a, from a guy who was actually involved in a battle. And you can check that out if you just type in, uh, in Google. Capel Ferry. C-A-P-E-L-L-E. -E, Capella Ferry. What a gorgeous village this is. We're approximately, I'd say... 20 minutes from Katzhovel, which is where the Efteling is. Hello, Sally. Good morning. Good morning, Luz Kulstra. We're here in Sprang Capello in North Brabant, below the rivers. And there are a lot of people out. It's a real big area for recreation, so there are a lot of holiday parks around here. Uh, there are, like, loads of camping campsites. Uh, you've got lots of bike hire places. Uh, there's lots of boats on the on the river. You've got the little mass just north of the village where I saw tons and tons of boats. Check it out on the map, Sprang Capella. Actually a really old part of the Netherlands here, mainly because we're we're a little bit higher up, I think. I mean maybe here we're not, but this area of uh, Lone Op Zand just east of us, which is where Katzhovel is, the site of the Efteling. That's a very old part of the country. And uh, got its history in peat digging, believe it or not. Sandra says, I know all about it. I was in history class in the Netherlands. I lived in the Netherlands for 44 years. Sandra, great to see you. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining us on this little tour today. I'm hoping that you're getting a, a nice feeling of what, what the place is like today on this sunny Sunday afternoon. I'm going to continue to walk down this way, I think, and take a little look at the houses. If you've got any questions or you want to say hi, or if you are interested in supporting our channel and uh, sponsoring a virtual tour from, from basically anywhere in the Netherlands for yourself, then uh, consider joining our Explorers Club. We've got a special annual subscription offer on, on at the moment. We have live events uh, every month, and uh, we have high-quality, uninterrupted versions of our live tours for you to watch as well. So uh, if you're interested, just drop the word club and I'll, uh, I'll send you the link. We've got loads of members on anyway. Uh, and it's an absolutely pleasure to have you guys in our community and uh, a privilege that you support what we do. Which is essentially to be the eyes and the ears of the world in the Netherlands and for, for the people around the world who can't make it back to the country. You know, we, we hope to be your eyes and your ears and hopefully reconnect you to the places that you really enjoy. So... Uh, and give you a taste of what it's like rather than putting out lots of uh, heavily produced videos. What I really want to do is give you a feeling as if you were with me just walking around following these two cyclists and having the crack, as they say in Ireland. Okay, look down there. Gorgeous little street, isn't it? Hello, Matt. Matt Kunders is watching from the Gold Coast in Australia. We've got a bit of Australian weather today. I mean, you know what's funny? What I think is funny is that a lot of people I see online really, really slate the Netherlands for having bad weather. And they talk about how much it rains here and 
you know, how, how terrible it is and how unreliable it is and so. Well, two things. Number one, you obviously have never been to England before because if you think this is unreliable, you want to go there for a while. But secondly, it just really isn't true. We get some fantastic weather down here in Brabant. Uh, it's almost Mediterranean at times, North Brabant. And uh, if you are looking for an outdoor holiday with lots of cycling, lots of eating out in the open air, lots of walking, um, lots of swimming, we've got loads of swimming lakes around here, then North Brabant is a superb option, especially if you've got kids. Um, so do, do take a look at North Brabant, especially the areas around Breda, Tilburgh, Katzhovel. There are some fantastic places to stay. So we're walking back up now, up to the village, up to the harbour of Sprang Capella. And Larry has just joined us, believe it or not. Larry N. Smith. Yes, the Larry N. Smith. Can you believe that? Hi, Larry. Great to see you in Sprang Capella in North Brabant. John says they were cyclists who weren't following the UK highway code. No, well, we don't put a lot of weight on UK law in, uh, in the Netherlands, John, believe it or not. Ah, gorgeous village, really, really nice. Shane says that thunderstorms are forecast later on in the week. Yeah, exactly, which is why I thought I would make hay, or rather make virtual tours while the sun shines and bring you guys out on this Sunday. We are planning another tour later on, Adele and I. But I do like to come out in the car of a Sunday morning, come adventuring, and I set, tend to sort of limit myself to 30 minutes and I'll set off and I'll see what I can find. And like I said earlier on part one, the Netherlands is a great place to come if you want a sort of adventure holiday, if you want to do a road trip style holiday, uh, whether it's on the train or on a, in a motorhome, uh, but if you're interested, if you like sort of spontaneous trips rather than planning everything beforehand, you know, the Netherlands is a great place to do that. There's lots and lots of great places to stay, lots of campsites. Uh, I really would love to hire a motorhome and travel around the Netherlands personally. Look at that thatch. Oh, beautiful. So, uh, yeah, drop us a comment, let us know what your sort of ideal Dutch holiday might be and whether or not you're planning to come back once you are permitted to the Netherlands and where you'd most like to travel to. We are looking at holding some uh, group retreats for a very limited number of people, Adele and I, some hidden Holland adventure retreats where we'll be taking a group of people out and about uh, to see some of the best, most secret places in the Netherlands where, to be honest with you, most people won't take you. We are planning that. For when, uh, from when you guys can come back, but uh, I'd love to know where you like to come here on holiday, whether you come to North Brabant, whether it's a destination for you. You know, a lot of people travel to places like Friesland and South Holland, but North Brabant is a, is a brilliant alternative, absolutely love it, and there's tons of history as well. Julio Diaz has just joined us from Argentina. Lauren Hill says, I always thought the Netherlands had similar weather to the UK, also having harsher winters. Summer's hot and dry southern parts of the Netherlands. I mean, we have cold winters, uh, for sure, and in the north of the Netherlands, in places like Friesland, Groningen, it's even colder. Uh, but you can really say that if you want a good holiday, a nice hot holiday in the Netherlands, genuinely I would look at coming in May and June. Uh, it can be colder than you want it to be in July and August. So coming in May and June, we tend to have weather a little bit like this. Okay, we're gonna walk back into the, uh, the center of the village now. Tove says she'd like to go to Klundert. Oh, of course, it's a beautiful place. Absolutely gorgeous. Suzanne Helms, he says, uh, we have lovely weather when we stayed in uh, what was that? Baymelon. Not sure where Baymelon is, Suzanne. Never been there before. Daniela says, I will come to Brabant in July and to Zanse Schans and hopefully some more places for weekend trips this summer. Daniela, that is very cool. Uh, I've never been to Zanse Schans, but I do know that there's a, a large number of Paltrock windmills there, which were the, 
the windmills that they used to saw wood. The Zanse, Zanse was one of the main areas in the in the uh, in the Dutch Republic for timber. So uh, I know it's a very beautiful spot. There are um, some amazing windmills all over, though, you know. So uh, do try and get out and uh, get out into the North Holland polder if you can, Daniela. Speaking of motorhomes, check that out. Lovely. tour to a close in approximately five minutes. We're going to head back to the chapel um, and you can see the village as we leave from the other side. We obviously, we came in this way obviously, but it's always nice to see a village from, from another angle. So this, this way leads us out of the village over to the river, to the Little Mars. Uh, and if we zoom into the sign, you might actually be able to get a good feeling of where we're fairly close to. Let's just... Uh, So over the water is Dussen, uh, then we've got Vaspik, uh, Ramsdongsphere. So this is the sort of area we're in. Ah, Suzanne says Bamela is in Limburg. I've never been to Limburg yet, but we are going to be going there to Maastricht. We've got a whole load of virtual tours coming up over the summer. Our Explorer Club members should already have the agenda. Um, and the great thing is that all of the tours that we'll be doing, the official tours, which is every other Saturday, we do two official tours a month. This is a sort of secret bonus in official tour. Uh, but all of the tours that we do on the Saturdays are actually of locations here in the Netherlands chosen by our members. Uh, they're either places connected with their heritage, with their roots, um, or places that they'd like to see but aren't able to make it to. So I'm really excited to do that. It's just very cool to have... Uh, our Explorer Club members um, ask us to visit those places and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just going to turn around and show you. See this house here? I feel like I want to buy that house and renovate it. Look. It's not often you see that. It is not often you see that. Larry Smith says, I want to visit Maastricht next trip. Larry, my friend, join the Explorers Club and we'll go to Maastricht on your behalf. I tell you what, the subscription for our Explorer Club is a heck of a lot cheaper than a plane ticket to the Netherlands. I know that some of our US friends pay up to €2,000 a, a plane ticket to visit the place they want to in the Netherlands. And To be honest with you, our Explorers Club is only €120 Euros a year and you get tons more stuff. So Larry, if you're interested and you want to send us out down to Maastricht or anywhere else in the Netherlands for that matter, join the Explorers Club and uh, help us continue our work because it's through memberships that we're able to carry on what we do. And we do this 24-7, Adele and I. Uh, and we're completely dedicated to our mission to explore and discover what we call Hidden Holland beyond Amsterdam. And we really, really appreciate everybody who's joined up or, you know, bought a shirt or bought a pendant. Or bought a supporters pack, a special Kuchenhof edition port a supporters pack. Uh, just, just super appreciative of it, you know. Five years ago when I started the channel, I, I never thought that I would be able to make it this far. And... Uh, it took me a long time, it took us both a long time to be able to get back to the Netherlands and, and do what we do. Um, but we finally made it with the help of our community and with the help of friends here in the country, people like Pauline and, and Anne and uh, everyone else who supported us. And oftentimes people, people ask me, what, what's, what's an English guy doing wandering around the Netherlands filming the place and coming to these little unimportant places, you know, these little villages? Why do you do it? And, uh, you know, it's a long answer, but in, in essence, I think the Netherlands has something very, very special to teach the rest of the world. Uh, I think it's a very, very special country. People live here in a very, very unique, warm, social way. Um, society is still very strong in this country. And uh, you can feel it when you live here and when you come here. And I know that a lot of people who are watching know exactly what I'm talking about, you know. Um, Plus the fact that they have really mastered the way that they deal with the problems of the landscape in their country. I mean, it's just a wonderful place and there's so much to learn. So um, that's one of the main reasons I do it. And the second reason is that I just love walking around 
and taking this place in. The architecture, the uh, the landscape, the people, the places. It's 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 been my dream for seven years to do this. So it's absolutely amazing that we made it back here and. I appreciate you joining me today in Spadan Capella and listening to me bang on about why I love the Netherlands. There we go, we're back at the chapel. Look at that, super. What time are we on? Should we have a look? I can't even read that. 10 to 2. 10 to 2 in Sprankapilla on a Sunday afternoon here in the Netherlands. Sometimes I have to pinch myself, honestly, that, I, uh, that I'm out here doing this work for you guys. And uh, we hope that we'll be able to continue for many years. Uh, we're developing our channel. We are always uh, looking for new locations, new ways to improve our streams. Hopefully the, uh, this tour has been nice and smooth for you today. The sound has been good. The picture quality has been great. Uh, and you've been able to enjoy Sprang Capella for yourself. Uh, who loves these trees? They're just so nice. It's a lovely village. So, two more minutes uh, to the car. If you want me to say hi to you before we finish, then uh, you can leave a comment now and... Uh, put in your request. Thanks for joining me Alida, thanks for joining me Debbie and John Adair, thanks Lauren Hill, thanks to Sonia Velasco. Great to see you guys with me. Honestly, like I love coming out here and walking uh, around the Netherlands, especially North Brabant, it's just such a gezellig place. Uh, but it's even more enjoyable to have you with me and to have our global family of, you know, of explorers from around the world who, who love the play, place as much as I do. And, you know, it's often hard to explain why you like a place so much, but I no doubt you've had that before. You've been on holiday somewhere that you've never been and you get off the plane and, you know, you get to your hotel or your holiday home and you think, oh my God, I feel, excuse me, I blaspheme that. You think, oh my goodness, I, uh, I feel completely at home. I feel like I've lived here all my life. Uh, well, that's the feeling I had when I first came here. And uh, so now to be here and to be able to live here and to be able to, you know, run the club from here and, and do what we do, it's, it's almost like a dream come true. So I just want to thank everybody, even if you've, you know, if all you've ever done is commented or shared a video or liked the video, you know, you're helping us reconnect people from around the world who've just got no possibility to come back to the Netherlands, people who were born here or who have roots here. Um, or who love the place, you're helping us to, to bring those people along as well. So I'm hoping in the coming months we'll be able to build our Explorers Club, get a few more members in so that we can continue to do what we do. We're launching our new store soon as well. Uh, and all the stuff we sell and all the memberships go towards uh, helping us to continue to do our work here. So uh, I'm going to spin you around now. For the last part of the show, you can look at my ugly mug. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, that was Spran Capella. The main reason I came here was because of the Battle of Spran Capella or the Capel Shafir back in 45 with the Canadians. So go check that out. Just go into Google and type um, Spran Capella Ferry Battle. Uh, and there's a great account from a Canadian soldier about that. Um, the chapel was really beautiful. Um, there wasn't a lot of stuff open today. Uh, maybe that's because it's Sunday. Um, of course, cafes and restaurants are back open now. Um, but it's a lovely spot to come and the uh, just up there is the main motorway and then beyond there you've got the river uh, and beyond that you've got Holland It's Holland. That's an absolute lie. You don't have Holland. You have um, that was back in the day. You have um, Well, actually it's North Brabant and the Gelderland. I'm thinking of the county of Holland and the county of Brabant uh, I often do that. I often go back in time for about 400 years. It's quite normal for me to, to do that. Anyway, that's enough babbling. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the trip to Spran Capella. Please uh, consider joining the club and supporting the channel. Uh, and until next time, look after yourselves, uh, look after each other. Tune in later on. Don't forget the football tonight and uh, keep it Dutch. <laughs>